hi and welcome or welcome back again to my youtube channel how is everybody doing i hope we are doing absolutely fantastic today i'm going to be sharing my transition in the uk as a registered nurse of how i have moved from band four to band 8a in the uk within a span of three years and i hope the purpose of this video is just to motivate somebody out there to encourage you to tell you do not settle as an immigrant because i see a lot of immigrants um, looking at themselves and asking themselves that how can I achieve this? How can I get there? It looks almost impossible But there is one thing that I want to assure you that until you try You wouldn't know that you are actually that good until you give yourself that chance to develop You wouldn't know that you are actually that good. So I hope this video inspires somebody I'm sharing this video is also because after I got this position I mean those that are very close to me like my work colleagues and I mean some people that know me they are very keen on knowing how I did it how I transitioned from band 5 to band 8 a without passing through band 6 without passing through band 7 so I was never a band 7 never been a band 7 I was a band 6 before um, but yes I transitioned from band 5 to band 8 a because I jumped band 6 and I jumped band 7 straight to band 8a and so i'm going to be explaining this to you how i did it and for just for clarity i'm going to be explaining a lot of things so that you understand this video and after it if you still have got any questions put them in the comment section and let me see how best i can go about it so if i come across my channel and my face for the very first time hi my name is becca i'm an immigrant nurse originally from ghana in west africa i practice i live and i work in london on this channel basically i talk about nursing i do lifestyle vlogs videos a little bit of me fun and festival life here and there so i came to the uk in 2020 um that was in the heat of the pandemic was when i came to the uk and i came in as a band four proud to that i had already worked in ghana from 2012 when i completed up to 2020 when i traveled i did my diploma in nursing first in ghana from 2009 to 2012 when i graduated and then i started a family so um, i started a family and then started working at the same time as a, a staff nurse and then i progressed to become a senior staff nurse at that time i wanted to go back to do my bachelor's so i went back to do my bachelor's for two years which was like a top up i did my bachelor's for two years after my bachelor's in Immediately after I graduated, I passed the UK exams, um, which was the occupational English test, and then I came to the UK to practice. When I first came in, I came in as a band four, and I was with the NHS, so the NHS brought me into the UK. When I came in, they gave me the band four because of the experience that I had proud to, you know, coming into the UK, and yes. So I was working in endoscopy. For those of you who have not been on my channel for so long, I was working in endoscopy. I worked there for... Um, close to a year like yes just the year mark and I realized that it wasn't something that was for me um, the environment was something that I don't want to talk about I just didn't like it that I didn't like it I didn't like it and this video is not to call anybody out because I know that a lot of people still watch me from my first trust my second job my managers watch me I know this because they let me know that they watch me so every manager I have worked with watches me on social media so you know i'm very uh, i mean i'm very, i'm well watched everybody watches me my, where i work my managers to my carers every, they watch my channel and so i'm not here to call anybody out or to say anything but the environment it worked for some people but for me it didn't work it just didn't work for me so i realized that this is not where i want to be the specialty was nice but i just didn't like it and at that time i was leaving and the plan was that i would just move to london to another nhs trust but when i got to london i realized that the nhs salary and the area was where i was going to live in london didn't correspond it wasn't feasible it wasn't something that was going to work for me so i was like you know what let me just go and try the care home and see how it works Proud to all this transition, while I was in the NHS, I was still working as an agency staff. So after I got my pin, I think I skipped this part. So when I came in as a band five, I did my OSCEs, which is the occupational, I'm um, sorry, the objective structure clinical examination. I got my pin like six weeks after I arrived and then I was moved from band four to band five, right? So when I was in the NHS, whilst I was leaving the NHS, I was a band five. I was still working as an agency nurse in some NHS trust. So I worked in um, 
Conquest Hospital in St. Leonard Warrior Square. I worked in Maidstone NHS and I worked in one private hospital called the King's Hospital. I was doing agency for these people just to, you know, get that knowledge and obviously to get more money to, you know, supplement my NHS salary at that time. So when I was leaving the NHS, as I said, I was about five. And when I was going to the care home, I started to search and I got this very beautiful care home, which is Barchester Healthcare, one of their homes in London, which, um, you know, gave me sponsorship at that time. And they made me a band six equivalent, um, which means that, you know, you were going to be doing more. I didn't have any knowledge in the care home, but I was so open to learning. And I am so thankful to my mentor in the care home, the first mentor I got, um, Gertrude, if you're watching this video, thank you so much. She took me through the care home. You know, she held my hand. She had 24 years experience in the care home. And I tell you what, I learned so much from her that it boosted my confidence because while I was still doing agency, I was working in COVID, I was working in respiratory, I had worked in endoscopy already, I had done a little bit of surgical, I did a little bit of a and &E, so I was already exposed in that, you know, that aspect. But I realized that the care home environment, the care home setting was so much different with the paperwork and all of that. But the way she transitioned me, she taught me a lot, even with all the experience I had already, she taught me like the paperwork, the care planning, how to write detailed and like outstanding care plans. She taught me a lot and you know, I worked with her. She was an elderly lady. She's been in the UK for 24 years and for all the 24 years of being in the UK, she has only worked in the care home. She also came in as an overseas nurse. She's only working in the care home. So she was very versed in the care home. And I'll say this with all pride that we worked so hard um, and took that care home to be ranked amongst one of the first best 20 care homes in London. So if you look now on care.uk website, that particular care home was ranked one of the best 20 care homes in london and so yes i was there for a year i learned as much as i could whilst i was there i was still working agency i worked in um ashford and st peter's hospital in head in in chetsey by the heathrow i worked in st george's hospital and i worked in um circle groups company which is now called i've forgotten the name that they call it now yeah but i was working in circle groups and um I gained a lot of experience still working in a and &E, in medical, surgical, trauma, orthopedics, cardiac. I did a little bit of like everything. This was just to build an idea, some confidence as to how to manage patients from these different backgrounds. Okay. So I did all of this and um, I decided to leave that particular area to another area after I've been in that home for a year. Um, that was where I said that the manager of that care home wanted to make me her deputy, but I felt like I wouldn't get that support I needed. I'm being honest, I knew that I wouldn't get that support I needed from my colleague nurses. So I respectfully declined that position. And so, yes, when I was a year in that home, so that was from 2021 to 2022, I was preparing to bring my family and I needed, you know, like more space. <laughs> you know, I needed like more space. I needed to change houses. And that particular area was so expensive. I couldn't afford the, the kind of house I'm living in now, I couldn't afford that kind of house in that area. So I wanted to leave. So whilst I was leaving, I didn't want to change company because I was still on sponsorship. I didn't want to go through that stress of changing sponsorship whilst my family was still coming because I was already going through a lot. My kids' visas were refused. There was a lot going on in my mind. I had done a mortgage application. I had to pull back from the application. Like it was a lot going on. Yeah, at that time also my dad had a stroke in Ghana. I had to made, make an emergency visit to Ghana. Like it was a lot going on in that year 2022. So I didn't want to add visa change into that. So I took a transfer from that home to another home in the same company and which was closer to where not too close but like 30 minutes 35 minutes drive as compared to driving all the way like two hours with traffic to the south part end of london so i did that for one month it wasn't working so i took transfer from there and then i came to this care home that was a bit local not too local but i mean it was more commutable um that was like 30 35 minutes so i was in that care home still as an nhs i mean equivalent band six in nhs um where i was doing most of the care planning i was still working night duties so um fact for when i left the nhs the care home i was contracted nights because that was what i wanted i didn't want to do day shift because i didn't want to so i was in the night shift 
I got to this care home, this new care home. I was helping them with the care planning and all that. I knew I was working so hard because whilst I was in the NHS, um, I did this practice assessor course where I was able to assess nursing students for clinical placement. Physically, I was working hard. Mentally, I was bringing a lot to the table. I was there for from November 2022 to somewhere March 2023 and then I realized I needed a change I didn't like the home you know I didn't like it I wanted to leave so I started to apply for a job um, at that time I wanted something that was very very local to where I was living because at that time my kids were already here and you know the motherhood stress and everything was beginning to kick in they needed that support to settle in a new environment they needed me to be around and I also wanted to be around, you know, that commuting and everything was getting so crazy. I was always in a rush to come home to pick them to school. It was just too much. I just couldn't go through that flow anymore. So I started searching for a job and then I got this particular company that I have just transitioned from. Okay. So I got this company, which is a bit local. It's like 20 minutes drive from my house, not too far. Um, they had tracheostomy specialty, but the downside of this company was that, well, I don't know whether it's my fault or it's their fault. I don't want to apportion blame to anybody. But during the application process, they didn't tell me that they had band six rules and they had band five and they had band seven and they had band eight, just like the NHS, right? So on my CV, they saw that I was about six. And that's one thing about this UK. Like nobody tells you things, okay? Like, and promotions are not automatic. You have to apply for them. So in my mind, I was thinking that, well, since you've seen that I'm a band 6 equivalent, if you have something like that, you would tell me. And it's not every care home that uses that banding system, that banding level. So they didn't tell me they had that band 5, band 6, band 7, band whatever. So I just applied as a staff nurse, um, ninth shift, and then I, you know, got the job. I did the interview, which I even shared here, and the live interview I did. I shared it. I started working. The work culture there was second to none. The home is so good. Like in terms of the ninth team, we were so like cool together. Everything was going on well. Nothing really major, major happened. And I wouldn't say like anything affected my decision in relation to the work environment itself because the work culture was great. I learned a lot there as well because as I said, Trakistan was one of the reasons why I went there. But I didn't see myself progressing in that place. Although there was, there is progression, there is avenue to progress, but I just didn't see myself progressing. I don't know, but I just didn't see myself progressing. So whilst I was in a dilemma asking myself for that to be there or not to be there, one day I was called by one of the managers and um, she pulled me aside and she was like, oh, we have a conversation. So I was like, my heart just skipped a beat. I thought I had done something wrong. So she just pulled me aside and was like, we have a conversation. Um, it's just about the day and night staff because now the day staff are struggling and they need, you know, they need people on the day shift more than the night shift. And she thinks that the night shift is more um, saturated. We are a lot on the night shift. So she wants to move some of us, maybe one or two people to the day shift. And I'm the first person she's actually approaching. So when she said that, I was like, yeah, I know that the day shift might need help. However, I feel like if we might be in the process of recruiting people to, you know, come on the day shift or whatever, I don't know. But my contract is night shift and I chose that night shift for a purpose because it just fits my family commitment. And that is the reason why I chose that night shift. It just works for me. And just for the information, um, that company had enhancement for the night shift so if you are working night shift you get enhancement of 30 percent for the on social hours you are working and the on social hours is from 8 p.m to 6 a.m the next morning so you are almost always getting those 30 percent enhancement on top of your salary if you are doing day shift you don't have any enhancement at all you just get your basic and the basic was so small it was almost like the nhs salary so i just i was like you know what um, when she said that, I was like, I don't mind doing like a couple of days or day shift in a month, but it's not going to be something like a routine as you want me to do like more of the day shift because number one, it doesn't work for my family commitment. Number two, that salary doesn't work for my budget in as much as I'm here to work. I purposely chose this job and I am intentional about choosing jobs because I want to make sure that the cost of living is actually corresponding with the salary you are giving me. 
I don't know, but this is just me. So I don't want to be in a job that I'm miserable and I'm, I'm unhappy. That is not what I want. I want to work in a place where I am giving in my all and that all I am giving in is corresponding, is giving me something that can make me happy, practically. So <laughs> when she said that, I was like, well, I would have to think about it. When I came home, um, I discussed and then, um, yeah, I went back to her to tell her that I can do a couple of days in a month, which didn't really sit down well with them. And then she said that if none of you, which is me and my colleagues that were doing the night, if none of you give us like a clear support, like a clear shift to do the day shift, we are going to force you. And that was what she used. We are going to force you to do the day shift. And me being the person that I know I am, there is nothing in my life that I want to be forced, that I want to appear like a manipulation. Everything I do, I am very intentional about it and I want it to come out of a place of love and acceptance. So that word that she used, like force you, didn't sit down well with me. I said, no, I don't want to be forced to do anything because I've already explained my reasons for doing the night shift. Moreover, that is my contract I have signed. That is my legal document to do night shift. So I it, like it's, I'm entitled to it. So you don't have to force me to do something I don't want to do. So after that conversation, I must be honest. Um, my love for the job began to come down. Prior to that, working in a care home setting, I have just gone through a lot of things from abuse from patients <laughs> to the politics to the everything i've survived i felt like you know what if i am going to still stay in the care home i don't want to settle for less i want to be there i want to be in that decision making process there was a day that a resident punched me so bad he gave me a dirty punch and i was putting on my glasses so he punched my eye with the glasses against my eye and I am a person that have eye problems already. I've got migraines, severe migraines. If, I've, if I get headache here, it's terrible. So that thing that that resident did and like abuse, oh my goodness. I worked with one racist resident who was so verbally abusive. I have been beaten by residents. Like, I'm like, you know what? this is just it i don't want to settle for less and that is just me and the fact that i have to not be forced to do something that i want to do it doesn't sit down well with me so i am going to go for the progression so i started to look for a job so that was last year november i started to look for a job and by the grace of abba father i got what i wanted so i at that time um i was about five in that company right because I didn't, when I was leaving that, my other company, I was a band six. When I came back here, they gave me a staff nurse position because they didn't tell me that they had senior staff nurse and, you know, unit manager and all those things. So I came here as a staff nurse. So I, so I came down to band five. I came down to band five. I mean, from band five, I was just seeing myself in that management position and I went for it. And I shared that story here. I think this, that's the video before this particular one, how I just transitioned so during the interview, after the application, I've gone into details in that video, how I went through the application and all that. During the interview, I was highlighting my successes, which I knew I have done, how I have worked together with my colleagues to move a care home to one of the top 20 care homes in London, how I have done auditing, how I have done care planning. Like I made, I was just bragging. I'm not even going to lie to you. I was just highlighting my successes, which I knew were my strength. And actually there were things that I have done. And by the grace of Abba Father, I had that job, which is a band 8A equivalent stated in my sponsorship offer letter. So I jumped from band 5 straight to band 8A. Now in the process of moving, whilst I was still navigating my way around working in the UK. One thing that I know that I did that was excellent that got me where I was, was that part of me being versatile, being open to a lot of nursing procedures, scenarios, happenings. Even though I've just been in the UK for three years now, I have been well exposed, very well exposed. I have exposed myself. Nobody did that for me. I did that for myself. And I feel like it's now going to pay off and everything is beginning to 
makes sense so i expose myself to different scenarios and that is one thing that managers want that is one thing that companies want that person that is versatile that person that is open so if you see yourself in an environment in a world and you want to progress try to do like bank shift agency sometimes it's not just about the money but the exposure every day is a learning experience for me when i go do bank shift or agency shift i make sure that i'm opening my eyes to new things i'm learning i'm communicating i am gaining clues i am building myself i'm going going for trainings i'm doing my you know stuff that will build me up I put everything in my CV and that is how I just escalated myself from band 5 to band 8A. It was quite a shocking news to, you know, people that were around me when, I mean, they saw um, my referencing form going for such a position and they're like, you know, <laughs> this particular person that wanted to put me on day shift and all of that, I used her name as a reference and she saw, you know, the position and she was like, from band five to that you know and all my colleagues were asking how did you do it how did you do it apart from doing all of these also i did online courses where i built myself you know learning there are a lot of free courses that you can do online you do the course for free but you pay only for the certification which you can add onto your cpd you can add it onto your cv to apply for jobs which are very good which are management courses very very basic courses that doesn't take time about eight weeks six weeks 12 weeks you know short short courses to just boost your cv so i did all of that in the background and that is how i got to where i am now so this is just a testimony to tell you not to give up and don't think that it's not possible you can't get sponsored you just came to the uk it is possible even when you are sponsored okay so as i sit here now i am proud to announce myself as the clinical deputy manager or the clinical lead or the deputy manager of a luxurious care home here in london thank you guys so much for watching for constantly coming back to the channel and until we meet again in my next video guys